the summer, I visited the Norvik Aero Engines workshops in Cambridgeshire to make some videos for the company's website and social media channels. While there, the issue of shock load inspections came to mind, and I was curious to find out what is involved should your engine have to be torn down after a propeller strike. Richard Boddy, the company's owner, outlined the process. So Richard, a shock load inspection is very much similar to what an overhaul inspection would be, isn't it? Yes, John, it is. At, at an inspection stage, we're inspecting every item uh, on the bench than, that, than you would uh, at overhaul. In fact, often we inspect the cylinders as well, which at overhaul we, we wouldn't because they would be discarded. In brief terms, what's involved with a shock load inspection then? The engine comes in, it's stripped, it's taken apart fully, it goes into the cleaning bay, it's fully cleaned and then goes onto the trolley and is taken into inspection. And then every part is inspected, uh, non-destructive testing, crack testing, measurements and fully inspected. And very often do they find faults that have occurred as a result of the prop strike or are they actually finding things that were present anyway most of the time? They do find things that, that are, are, are a result of the shock load, which, are, which is always unfortunate. Damage can occur, crankshafts can be bent, crankcases can be cracked, um, column rods can, can, can be distorted, and these items will then need to be replaced. We and, have, and normally your insurance will cover a shock and load inspection? And the insurance is, is designed to be there to, to yes, cover, cover the costs. What are the usual things that cause prop strikes then? I mean, I can imagine sort of taxiing over grass being the, a fairly common thing. Heavy, heavy landing, a pilot error sometimes, pilot training schools, you know, the undercarriage isn't fully deployed. Uh, sometimes just sad mistakes. Uh, a customer took his engine back from overhaul, installed it on the plane, towed the aircraft out, went to start the engine and hadn't uh, taken the tow bar off and the propeller hit the hit the tow bar. It was so infuriating and extremely upsetting for the customer. Very expensive as well and time consuming for everyone concerned. And obviously other things can be discovered because you're taking it you know your engine may be somewhere on its way towards TBO and have a shock load inspection and it's old and it's corroded potentially you're gonna you might find other things in there that need to be dealt with you do but very often when an engine is close to TBO bearing in mind the insurance company is, is picking up the tab for a lot of the work a lot of customers then say well while it's all apart you know let, let's let's overhaul it at the same time and then there's a there's a, d a degree of expenditure from the customer and the insurance company. Yeah, I was going to ask, is that economically a, a wise thing to do? I mean, does it, does it make a big saving? It does make a big saving. It doesn't make a big saving if the engine is, is, is young, mid-term, because you're replacing cylinders that don't need to be replaced. You're replacing camshafts that don't need to be replaced. But if an engine is a couple of hundred hours away from TPO, it, it seems to me to make sense. According to Lycoming, a propeller strike includes any incident, whether or not the engine is operating, where repair of the propeller is necessary. Any incident during engine operation where the propeller has impacted a solid object, including the ground, or sudden RPM drop on impact with water or tall grass, even if the propeller appears undamaged. In such circumstances, it's mandatory for the engine to be removed and its components thoroughly checked for cracks or distortion. Well, I'm in the inspection area here at Norvik and I'm with Daniel Robbins, who's the workshop manager here. Can you go into a bit more detail about what a shock load inspection actually involves? We know it's like an overhaul uh, inspection, pretty much identical in fact. What is it that you're looking for when you're doing this? Um, we're looking for major damage uh, or slight damage to major components and any component listed in Service Bulletin 533. So this is the Bible that tells you what you've got to yes, inspect yeah, basically. Yeah. And um, what sort of components would that typically involve? Um, the major one is the crankshaft um, because that is where all the force is going to mm. from your prop uh, and the crankcase. And other items as well as that? Yeah, con rods, any moving part that's, that's rotating has to be checked. Literally, the engine is stripped apart and you're looking at everything, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. And, and what sort of testing are you doing on these components? Uh, first we do a visual and a dimensional and then we'll do crack testing. So vi a visual and dimensional checks, what would they involve you doing? Um, first we'll look at the condition of the component and if there's any visible damage on it. 
Uh, and then we would do runouts and parallelism checks of different components. What does that mean? So the run out of the crankshaft, we would check that the flange or the spigot wasn't bent and any journal um, hasn't gone out of round from the force from the shock load. And you commonly find these kind of problems when you do uh, shock load inspections, do you? Or, or for the most part, do they usually pass? Mostly they pass, but you do, depending on how significant the shock load was, um, but crankshafts do seem to be the most susceptible. So as well as the dimensional and visual checks that you just talked about, you do other checks as well, don't you? Yes, we do crack testing, which is an MPI and an FPI. What do those two things stand so for? So the MPI is a magnetic particle inspection, which is where we check all our steel components and an FPI is a fluorescent penetrant inspection, which is our aluminium component. So the MPI inspection, talk, talk me through what happens with that. Uh, first of all, we would get the component and we put a magnetic field through the component uh, and spray a dye or a, like a, a it's fluid. A, it's a solu solution, with, solution. With, with a special... Yeah, with small particles mm. of metal in it. Uh, and when the field is broken, that is where you'll find your crack. And does it, is it obvious? Oh, we would find it. You yeah. see it straight away. Yeah, we would find it. So you it. might not see it visually, but it will. Be. If it's there, you'll see it. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And and um, the fluorescent uh, test that you do? Um, we put a green dye over the component, uh, and then we wash it off, and then we add a powder, which will then bring the green to the surface, and then we'll see the crack under a UV light. You've got a couple of examples of hit here of, of items that have failed crack load. Sorry, crack load. <laughs> Shock load inspections. Yeah, yeah. This is part of a crankcase here, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a crankcase here, which has suffered a crack through here from the force of the crankshaft. Now, I, it's difficult. I can see you've marked it on there, mm. but you can't really see that there's a crack there. That came up in the fluorescent test, would that have done? Yes, that's correct. And, and what, what does that mean for this crankcase now? This crankcase is now unserviceable uh, and, and cannot be repaired. And you've got a crankshaft here as well. We've got a crankshaft here, yep. Uh, this is Can I have a feel of it? Yeah, no problem. These things are absolutely <laughs> a real chunk of metal. Now, I can't see anything. There are no visual. I mean, I know I'm just, I'm just looking at it, but that looks normal to me. Yeah, well, we've, we've carried out our um, run-out check on the flange and the spigot, uh, and it has actually bent the flange. And what does, that, what does that mean now for this? This is scrap metal. This is also scrap as well, yeah. Oh, lordy. Okay, let's put that down there. And what would be the worst thing that would happen if you carried on running an engine that had that in it, for example? Um, the worst case scenario is the prop would come off. You know, the vibrations of the crank not running true mm. could cause a crack. Uh, the crack will just keep getting bigger and bigger. And, yeah, could be... Nobody wants to have a prop strike, at least of all, nobody wants to admit to having done no, it, because no. at the end of the day, quite often, on most, in most cases, it's pilot error. Mm. Um, and I suppose you might be taxiing across a bit of grass, and there was a, I don't know, a divot in the bit of the grass there, I mean, it's easily done, and the nose goes down, the oleo is a bit flat, and boing, it, it strikes a bit of, mm. I don't know, dry earth. And the pilot there might be thinking, oh, do I own up to this, you know? It was, it, was, it was just a little boing, you know, I mean, surely that can't have done any damage. What would you say? Uh, I would be rather be safe than sorry. How frequently are people having prop strikes? I mean, can you sort of give us an idea of what percentage of your work is overhaul and what percentage is, prop, is, is shock load inspections? I would say shock load inspection is 25 to 30 percent of our work. Okay, so um, quite high then, actually. Yeah, I think sort of perhaps in the times we are after COVID, Pilots may be slightly rusty and uh, more things have happened. You've but, seen more um, coming in after people are yes, getting back into yeah, it. Yeah, but you know, it, it's just one of those things. But um, yeah, it's probably 25 to 30%. Interesting that Norvik has seen an increase in propeller strikes this year. Fascinating too that according to Lycoming, even striking tall grass can cause internal damage. My thanks to Norvik for showing me around their facility and for hiring me to make some fresh video content for their website and social media channels. If you'd like a video made for your organisation, then please get in touch. Unlike some video production companies, my BBC TV news background means I can work fast and efficiently, which is reflected in the price. That's all for now. In my next video, I fly to Perth. No, not Perth, Australia, alas, but Perth in Scotland. 
Fly safely, my friends. <laughs>